I wonder if you've worked out yet what today's idea will be. Think back, last week we were looking at AM4, and it was just, it was just a week, it was just four little pieces to it. Um, the topic was called Modeling Linear Relationships. Do you remember that? All these kinds of pairs of quantities, and they go up together or they go down together. Um, that was what AM4 was about. AM5 is not about modeling linear relationships, it's about modeling non-linear relationships, things that aren't um, straight lines, okay? So the first kind of non-linear relationship we're going to have a look at is <laughs> shared in common between fountains and also satellite dishes and also um, objects that move under the force of gravity um, I don't know if you, just have a look at this, I don't know if you can see by the context what this is. Shh. It's quite ingenious actually, whenever we as a, you know, you know, NASA or European Space Agency or whoever, whenever we want to go somewhere really far away, you would think that a straight line is the most direct way and the quickest way to get there. But it's not because to go in a straight line, you've got to provide all of the energy and all the thrust and all the speed by yourself with a big rocket, right? Um, so really, really smart people worked out, actually, there's all these other bodies around the solar system that we can, um, the word they use is slingshot, we can use their gravity to slingshot around and you trace this particular shape when you do that. Oh, these guys are looking for me. Hold on. I know what you're here about. Can you come back in about 10 minutes? Is that okay? Thanks. That's right. Um, does anyone, has anyone guessed what the shape is that I'm interested in? Whoa. The shape that I'm interested in is the parabola. Now, probably the most obvious one was this one here, right? Um, and in fact, just like water traces that, in fact, if you take any object, if you take, uh, I'll just use one of these. If you take any object, Akil, I hope you're awake, and you throw it through the air under the force of gravity, then the path that it traces out every single time, you can throw it back now. If I, oh, I'm gonna embarrass myself. Sorry. That was a bad throw. The path it traces out every single time is a parabola, okay? So we're really interested in these things. Well, you can throw it really hard, you'll just get a different part of the parabola. You can't avoid it, which is kind of interesting, okay? If you throw any object under the force of gravity, it will trace out the shape of a parabola. Now, if, I, <laughs> if you do a bad throw at me like Akil just did, right, then um, the shape will just be a different part of the parabola. So we're interested in how to describe these things in a, in a logical way, um, and not just saying, oh, it's a cool shape, but what are, the, what are the numbers and symbols and equations we can manipulate to get us this shape, okay? So in your book, what we're gonna start off doing will look like this. Now, I'm going to do the, um, the slow and laborious bit with you because you have to know how to do the slow and laborious bit, but we will very quickly um, give way to using technology to do this because that's what we do in the real world, okay? So this is, um, this is the first question out of, I think it's chapter 12, 12a must be, so you can find that and confirm that um, for me if you like. So the idea of a parabola, we met these equations like these guys here with these x squareds and that kind of thing, uh, these have a special name. These kinds of equations here, or expressions, uh, it starts with a Q, does anyone remember? They're called, yeah, I heard it, quadratic. Very good. So it's been a little while since we looked at these because we've focused so much on straight lines and what have you. So when you have a quadratic equation, then the shape that you get is a parabola. Okay. Um, now, the telltale sign of a quadratic is this guy up here. Oop, I overlapped it, there we go. The fact that there's something and it's squared. Okay, in fact, that's why they call them quadratics, uh, because squared, like as in if you've got a town square, or you know, you've got a square in your school, you often call that a quadrangle, right? So quadratic takes its name from the fact that it's squared. Anytime you see this kind of equation, the shape it will trace out is a parabola, okay? Just like all those examples I showed you before. Now, 
like I said, this first bit starts off and it's a bit slow and laborious, but I promise we won't do it for very long. We just need to do it enough to get a general idea. Okay? So this table of values idea, we've seen this so many times. The reason why it's so useful is because no matter what kind of equation you've got, um, you can use this same tool every single time. So you've probably got a calculator there, but I want you to do this first bit, this first example with me by hand. Okay? So we're going to complete this table of values. For all these particular values of x up the top, we're going to get some values for y. Okay? So when, this is what I would literally write underneath this, okay? when x equals 0, I'm going to substitute that into our quadratic equation up here, just like you substitute it into a linear equation, and I'm just going to evaluate it. So it's going to look like this. y equals, now because 0 is such a simple number, you might be able to work out what this is really quickly, but I'm going to do all of the steps. I'm going to say 2 times 0 squared. Do you see that's 2x squared? But I'm substituting the x, right? Minus 4 times 0 plus 3. That's a really messy 0 that looks like a 6, sorry. There you go. So you can see I've substituted all my x's for zeros, and this is really easy to work out because all the zeros just kind of vanish away. What do you get left with? Five. Did someone say five? It's um, it's three because you've got two lots of zero, then you've got four lots of zero, all of which is just zero. Yeah. So therefore, I can say there's a value over there when x equals zero, y equals three. Um, I'll do this one more time just because it's worth getting it into your head and you do need to do this by hand in particular contexts. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just do one more value. So when x equals 1, I'm going to try that out instead. Just a different substitution. So again, I'm going to do it in long form, like so. Uh, it's a teeny bit more complicated. So 2 times 1 squared is... It's late in the afternoon, isn't it? It's 2, last I checked. Uh, 4 times 1, of course, is? 4. Yep, you're restoring my faith in humanity, people. Plus 3. Plus 3, yeah, okay. The part that didn't require any thinking. Okay, we'll be. Um, so 2 take away 4 plus 3 is got. Whoa, hold on. 2 take away 4 is negative 2. Oh, yeah, I did That's a 1. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, we're doing well. All right, now, thank goodness, therefore, you know, you really wouldn't have to do this very many times. You have a calculator there that you can, of course, punch this into. But you can go one step better than that. And um, this is going to make things so much easier for all the subsequent questions you've got. Uh, if you haven't already, can you open up your laptop? 